Mum's actually representing Geneva today, who sadly couldn't be here in person, but we're glad that she's left her products for us. Tell me a bit about some of the things that she's produced. Okay, 9394, the concept of it is her date of birth and her friend's date of birth, 9394, that's where that name came from. Um, she's been designing logos for some time at home, and she decided to get onto the fashion side of, of the business. Um, she designs the sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats herself, uh, the sweatshirts are manufactured in England, but the beanie hats we've now gone, up, gone over to manufacturing in Hong Kong to keep our costings down. So she's doing pretty good. The company's been going only for six months. She has an online business, so it's website based, but she's also on ASOS Marketplace. Naomi, what's your role? I'm here to assist Geneva and her mum today. And what do you think about the products? As a young person yourself, if you don't mind me saying so, would you wear some of the products that Geneva has made? Definitely. I mean, I like the hoodies. Very comfortable. like the style. For me, it's just, I would definitely wear it. Okay. Well, sisters, thank you so much for gracing the event with your presence. <laughs> so this organisation that you've set up is how old now? Um, Infinity Therapy is about two years old now. But I started working with vibrational medicines many years ago. I started with homeopathy, and I've been I use crystal um, elixirs, it's where I make elixirs, um, tablets, and water from the crystal itself. To digest. Yes. So you've got even more powerful. So tell me, what what type of crystals do we have here? Okay. These pink ones. The ones I've chosen today was the rose quartz. The rose quartz is all about love. Love for me is the key, the key to everything. It's a key and opening of your heart. Once you connect with your heart, you connect with everything. And once you're one with God, you're one with everything. I love that theme because we need more love in our community. I'm not saying we don't have love, but we need more love. So see where we are going to start here, right here, so. <laughs> and I also, also work with um, organites and um, other vibrational stuff around um, the environment, yeah. Well, you've wet our appetite, so I'm not going to ask you to say any more about what you actually do. I think we just invite people to come along and consult you. How do they get in touch with you again, Yvette? At the moment, I'm still developing my website, but I've got um, an email address, so infinitytherapy at gmail.com. And um, once you contact me, I can put you on my mailing list and we can go from it from there. Thank you so much, Yvette. Beautiful sister, lovely sister. Love. What impact do you think the black market and natural November have on our community? I think they have a great impact. Um, it's proven that uh, we can work together, we can collaborate, um, basically helping to keep um, the pound within the community for that little bit longer and basically making the wider community aware of the different services um, that, that we have to offer. We've heard a lot of feedback about your sources, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, the source. Um, I was a raw foodist for a time. I've now kind of transitioned back to being a vegan because of the winter months. Um, I've made a um, raw, organic, fantastic hot pepper sauce. Um, which sells very well. Um, currently going through rebranding at the moment. It was called Libra, and I have been told by certain black um, marketing experts that um, it could even alienate certain black people. And because it's more of a health product, it should be able to transcend to a more wider market. So currently going through a bit of a rebranding at the moment, just on the outside, not what's on the inside. Um, I, I only managed to bring five with me today. I've been so busy running around doing numerous things. Um, so I bought five and they've, they've gone. Wow. So sorry to anyone who came late and they didn't manage to get one. Maybe next time, sorry. My name is Danielle. Um, I asked Mark one day if Black History Studies would like ever employ people. He was like, well, you could volunteer at this. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> My name's Mariah. And Mark asked me to volunteer here today. <laughs> That's it. Hi, uh, my name is Sister Lidret and I was a student of Black History Studies. So I did the beginners and advance. And ever since then, I've always helped out. So it's about my fourth or fifth time doing this event. 
each time it gets better and it's bigger and the atmosphere is just awesome. Um, on several occasions I've been on reception so I actually see and bl been blessed to see the guests come in and it's been wonderful this time even more guests and this time I'm coordinating so it's been an honour to actually have that role and just see how everyone's getting on and doing my part to help Black History Studies. What makes our Black History Studies Black Market volunteer? What sort of person are they? Well, first of all, once you know about yourself being black and um, I've been on the courses, so as I said, you know, I understand the economics and the energy that's from there. I've just said, you know, what? every time I say, when is the next one? Charmaine tells me, I put it in my diary immediately. So I know that I'm not going to work and I dedicate my whole day to black um, market. And the fe film festival, I've actually seen maybe just one film because I'm always working. So I'm going to go and see the next one, but it's been great. And who hasn't come, you've missed out. <laughs> Try and come next time. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell them from now, like, all of that. Don't get me wrong, you go to and you, you get your qualification to put on you, brother. But I'm saying, imagine if you, like, done that on road because you've already proven to yourself that you're capable because you've done it, innit? I'm saying, imagine if you've done that on road. Imagine that's on road, that's seen that raw, like, crud on the block are capable of getting their education to the highest mass, you know? Don't judge it, it's not going to work out for you, but the kids don't think about it. The kids only think about today, getting through today, and then tomorrow and this week. You understand? They're not thinking about years ahead and the repercussions that it will have on them. And sound like hence criminal record, hence people, you doing something back to 10 people, those 10 people, and then throughout your life, you can't bump into those, those, those 10 people. You can't bump into five of them, definitely. Because five might allow it, and then five will want to do something to you. Understand? This is, and then you get to the bit of, I can't go here, I can't go there. You understand? So, education is, is, a, is a main part, is one of the main parts, I think. It's just what we see. It's again, well, that's why we're what we see in our families. We see everyone going to prison coming out. You see, you see a man, your uncle or someone go to prison, come out, hench. And everyone being rating, yo, big man. You're like, yo, my man's got muscle, my man's hard. My man's getting his new car. He's got a sexy girl, like, bro, oh, he's got rings. And you see that as, yo, that's a, that looks like a good thing. That's how, that's how lost we was as a people. And we grew up, everyone grew up in that cycle of seeing that. So we're thinking, you know what, prison's a good thing. So we go there and they go there again, then you see the, the you start getting longer sentences and you start feeling the impact, you start losing your family members, losing your girlfriend, you can't see your kids. Then you see, whoa, wait there, this is not actually as good as it's cracked up to be. Okay, my name's Stephen Graham. Um, I'm an orphan director. I wrote the book, um, I'm a Gun, and I based the documentary off the book. Um, personally writing the book was actually to make awareness of the knife and gun situations and uh, the psychological impact and the physiological impact that guns have on our youth, which I think is really important. It's consequential right now in today's society. So I really wanted to um, make a note of that and like, you know, to really bring to truth, to forefront through the book, through the documentary, especially the documentary you saw today. Um, the aim was to really awaken and I wouldn't say just a really awaken but more enlighten our people because I think it's really important that we we you know a lot of us are aware of the gun violence but we need to really give strength and, and understanding to our people and support and let them know that you know some of them that we're there to help them we're there to support them and we know our community is going through and we want to be there to support the community community's everything. Okay where would you say the greatest response that you get from the film or the book comes from which part of the community? Uh. Yeah, I'm talking beyond, so I'm not really talking about younger or older because everyone plays a role in this. It's not just for, yes, of course we want the young youth to come out, but at the same time, the older people play a role in this. You see, adults need to play their role in this. They need to play their role in educating the youth. They need to play their role in giving the youth some time. They need to play their roles in the aspects where the kids need to play their roles in respecting the parents, knowing what we've been through, knowing what the has been through. So it's not just like a, a kid's thing or an adult thing. It's an everyone thing. It's targeting everyone to understand who we are, what we are as a people, what we need to change to become the stronger and the better people we, we know we should be. It would be cheaper to send every kid in this country to private school than it would be to send the amount of youth that are going to prison. Right? So it's cheaper to send and give a child the best education than it is to put them in a young offenders institute. But we have a society that would rather put young people, particularly young people who ain't got no money, and people who particularly young people whose skin is the wrong colour. We'd rather have them in a young offenders institute than give them the best chance to compete. 
and on the world stage intellectually. And so I might have to realise the trap this this out there and why that trap is set for us. Um, what were the challenges in producing this piece of work? To be honest with you, I had a very supportive network of people and because of my life and what I've been through as a youth going to prison and the stuff I went through and you know, the change I've made, a lot of people you know, gave support, I mean the people, the cast in the documentary, they gave support, said you know, they're going to they're gonna, you know, they're gonna um, help me with it. The challenges really were um, just me giving, you know, it was more like, you know, it was the, the time, putting time to it because I was doing other things as well. But, um, like I said, being strong and determined and knowing what I want, we have to, as a people, as, well, as individuals within the community, know what we want to do and how we can help to balance and strengthen our community. So that, more than I'm saying is a challenge, it's more like I was more willed to make it happen anyway. Do you feel me? Because I had to. It's, it's not like I wanted to. My heart, my spirit desired that you know, this needs to be done. What you're exposed to is what you know. What you know is what you're going to apply to life. What you're applying to life is how you have to like estates and things like that. The government have built estates in a way where they are segregated from other community groups. So you build a certain community and then people start internalising. So therefore, what they're exposed to is internal. It's not in the middle world <coughs> many times. I wouldn't say all the time, but many times. So um, it's easy for you to fall into a certain type of um, role, as it were, because it's really not. How did you decide who to feature in, in the documentary? Well, I did wanted people who have been through the street life, but at the same time, have turned their life around, and also people who mentor youths and talk to youths. You know, and I, there's a very vast majority of youths, there's a vast group of people out there, you know, so, and quite a lot of them I, call, I know, so I called upon old friends, and, you know, it was beautiful to have them come out and show me that support and give me that love, you know? And you know, seeing what I'm trying to do, and understand my vision. When I showed them my book, when they saw my book, because they knew my book was out, and they saw the vision of using questions from the book, specific questions from the book, to um, to to make a documentary. They saw that they believed in the dream that and that's important to have people to. We need to believe in each other. They believed in the dream that I visioned, and it's great that people could share my vision. So you know, they was all out for me, with me supporting me. You know, they all came to us first, greeting. It was, it's, it's lovely to have that type of level. So, you know, we do, we can as a people, we can come together. It showed that, man, and I get that from support. Man, so I have no more love to say about my people. We shouldn't be surprised today when we see that their number one industry is to promote crime. It's to promote uh, people into crime and punishment. You know, we live in a society, brother, which is so contradictory. Because on the one hand, they make the vehicle to travel at 130 miles an hour. But then they make the speed limit 70 miles an hour. And if you go over the speed limit, then they can fight. They make their tax system such that there are all these loopholes for the rich and the powerful who know how to uh, do that. But for the man in the street, he literally finds himself having to, you know, maybe uh, try and skip out on paying some national insurance or some other uh, um, uh, fee that is due in order just to survive. If, if the average person was to pay all the bills that they're confronted with, the chances are they'd be sitting outside of the local tube station begging with a bowl because, because you'd be broke. And so everybody is forced into some type of criminal enterprise just to survive. Okay, so if anybody's thinking about being a black market volunteer for the next one, tell them something. Do it <laughs> now. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> okay. Lastly, look into the lens. Mark and Charmaine are going to be watching this. Tell them something, a message, personal message from you, you, you. Look directly this way. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for asking me to volunteer. And keep asking me to. <laughs> Just continue and I love you. Boy, it's been a day. It's been one of those days that we can honestly say we can see the community coming together in love and unity. All our business proprietors here have exchanged details. They're sharing their art, their works. They're not competing with each other. But you know what's nice? Is that the people that have come to attend the event really appreciate having things that are produced 
and made by our own. So we have to salute Black History Studies for allowing this to happen and to be the persons to have the vision for this event. This is the fourth Black History Studies Black Market event and we know there's going to be a fifth, a sixth and a seventh and so on. The journey is going to continue. So I'd like to tell you that we've seen people who are as young as eight. In fact, our youngest person today was three years old. So remember, we have our young and our gifted and our black children, and they need us to be behind them, encouraging them to reach out, to do their own thing, and to give back to the community. We had the good food produced by Mark, and we had the film sessions hosted by Charmaine. So enough love and unity in here. And I can honestly say what you know I'm going to say. A yes so nice. Blessings, one love, peace and everything to everybody. Everything is everything.